the add 5 plus 20 over 5, one of the ways to do it is to turn the whole number into a fraction by using a denominator of 1 right here. Um, and then the question is, how do you add two fractions? And so one idea was, well, can we just do this? Can we just go straight across and make it 25 over 6? What do you think? I see a couple of shaking heads. Why doesn't that work? Ah, okay. So on the one hand, we have this voice in the back of our head saying common denominator, common denominator, common denominator. It's a good voice. I don't want to silence it. Um, before we go there, um, let's also think about other ways that we might know that this answer is not right. Um, so this number, 5 over 1, is actually equal to 5. The fraction 20 over 5, what is that as a ballpark? It's actually equal to 4, right? So really, if I add these two things together, I should get something which is, you know, at least it's got to be bigger than 5. But what's 25 over 6? Approximately, ballpark, as a whole number. How many times does 6 go into 25? 4 and something, right? So clearly just based on the sizes of these numbers, the first approach to this can't be the case, right? Because if I add a positive number like 20 over 5 to the number 5, I have to get something which is at least bigger than 5, right? But 25 over 6 is not bigger than 5. So, right, so we can see, even if we didn't know anything about common denominators, uh, we can see on its face that 25 over 6 is not going to work for us. So let's cross the common denominator bridge. I mean, we could, we probably should. Um, we could also have just done this problem in the way that you suggested which was to reduce 20 over 5 to the whole number 4 and get 9. But let's do the common denominator thing anyway because we're going to have to do it in, in other sorts of problems where the arithmetic isn't quite so straightforward. So if I wanted a common denominator for these two fractions, how can I find it? Any common denominator will work means that all I require is that whatever number I put here, and it has to be the same for both fractions, but whatever number I put there has to both be a multiple of the number 1 and it also has to be a multiple of the number 5. So what's an easy way to find a number which is definitely a multiple of two other numbers? How about just multiply them together? So this is the quick and dirty path to a common denominator. Just take 1 times 5 in this example. And that product will be a common multiple of the numbers 1 and 5. Always. It might not always be the least common multiple, but it's guaranteed to be a common multiple, and that's all we need. This is not so shocking in an example that's this small. But fast forward 12 weeks from now, we're going to be doing this kind of arithmetic with variables and exponents and polynomials and all this other stuff swirling around, but the principle is going to remain the same. If I want a common denominator, I can just multiply my denominator straight across. And it might not be the smallest common denominator, but it's a common denominator, and that's all we need to get the ball rolling. It's all we need to sidestep the most tricky part of this whole process. So now that I've identified a common denominator, how do I fill out the numerators? Um, you do the 5 times 5. Okay, so I, I take the 5, this one here, and I multiply it by 5. How come? Because 1 times 5 is 5. And yeah, right. So the question is, what did we do to this first denominator to turn it from 1 into 5? We multiplied it by 5. And therefore, whatever I multiply the denominator of a fraction by, I also have to multiply the numerator of the fraction by in order that the value of that number remain the same, mm -hmm. right? If I suddenly have five times as many people show up to my party, I'm going to need to order five times as much pizza if I want everybody to have the same amount as they otherwise would, right? So increase one by a factor of five, increase the other by a factor of five. So all told, what that will do is give us a 25 up here. The other place that we can get that 25 from is actually right here. Right? Multiplying the numerator of the first fraction by the denominator of the second. That's an option that only works if we got our denominator by multiplying across the way that we did. So that's the other benefit of just unthinkingly almost multiplying straight across to get your common denominators, is it unlocks this little crossroads technique to balance out the numerators. So 25 over 5 for the first numerator. How about for the second one? 
20. And again, that's the other crosswalk, 1 times 20 from over here. It gives me my second numerator, 20. And now both of my fractions have common denominators. And now that they have common denominators, how do we add them together? Across. Across which part of the fraction? Across the numerators, right. Add 25 and 20. That's going to give me 45. What do I do with the denominator? You keep it the same. You keep it as a 5. Right. Because the denominators are like currency. It's like saying that I have $5 bills and I'm adding one stack of 25 $5 bills to another stack of $25 bills. At the end of the day, I have 45 $5 bills. Right? So the denomination of my bills didn't change. Just the number that I have changed. Um, so I add across the numerators. I get 45 over 5. But what is 45 over 5 another name for? 9. So again, we get the same answer going either way. Um, this will happen a lot for us this semester. We'll see some ways of doing problems that take us all the way up and down a gigantic mountain, and other ways of doing that same problem that just maybe take us around the path at the bottom of the mountain to get to the other side. Um, and that's fine. I mean, sometimes it's easier to remember the, the more intricate process. Sometimes it's, it's easier to find the shorter way. Um, 